My name is Joseph Awun. I'm the president of Northeastern University. I would like to welcome you to this uh, sunny day in Boston. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Larry with us. Uh, as you know, the relationship between uh, Northeastern and CBS uh, has been a long-term relationship and extremely strong relationship uh, with, that covers nursing, uh, pharmacy, obviously, uh, but also, you know, looking at opportunities in other domains. For instance, uh, today, Larry and I talked about what we can do with, uh, with cybersecurity. I can tell you that uh, this is every time you go to Washington, and I'm, I serve on the Homeland Security Council, that, you know, the term cy cybersecurity is the key word that triggers a discussion for about two hours. And, you know, it's very, very simple. Every company, every institution, every piece of the, of the government wants to focus on this domain. So we, <clears throat> we, Larry, we are delighted with this partnership. Your industry is changing in the same way that higher education is changing. We're comparing notes and clearly, you know, you will see that we have focused on input measures in higher education now you know, the demand is for output measures. You know, when students finish, do they get jobs? What is the performance? What it, you know, are they ready? And this is why with the <clears throat> internships programs that we have, the co-ops, now in 92 countries, you know, we have had the best job placement record in higher education. And frankly, this is new to higher education. Higher education doesn't want to focus on that. So we're delighted to take this contrarian approach and, you know, we, Larry is going to talk to you about what's happening in the industry and the changes, and I was struck by the similarity between uh, the two. Now, I have the pleasure now to ask Bill Basic to come and introduce uh, Larry. Bill told me that today he's going to behave in terms of his introduction. So, Bill. <laughs> All right, thank you, good morning everyone. I'm Bill Basic, managing partner for uh, the New England practice of Deloitte and on behalf of Northeastern University, uh, the Massachusetts Business Roundtable and our co-sponsor, Wilmer Hale, I would like to welcome you to our last CEO breakfast of the academic year. No reaction? <laughs> Come on, no more outstanding speakers, no more free breakfasts we, we don't charge you for this. This is a free breakfast. But what a way to close our year. As you may know, uh, for those of you who attended back in April, uh, we had Joe Tucci of EMC, and today we close the year with Larry Merlo of CVS Caremark. So what a way to close the year, and what a great year we did have here. Let me give a brief introduction uh, of Larry. Uh, three decades ago, Larry Merlo was a new pharmacist working to be the best pharmacist he could be. Today, Larry oversees a pharmacy innovation company with 200,000 employees and 7,500 CVS pharmacy stores nationwide that is helping people on their path to better health. No longer filling prescriptions, he is fulfilling customer and shareholder expectations as the keeper of a consumer brand that has become a household name. CVS Caremark reached a big milestone last month, its 50th anniversary. Now, most of you know it has deep roots in New England. It opened its first store in Lowell, Massachusetts, actually. It's committed to the Boston community and Massachusetts as a whole, contributing more than $6 million over the past five years in support of local children's and community health initiatives and organizations like Children's Hospital. CVS Caremark has a great growth story and continues to grow both organically and through acquisitions. In fact, Larry has led five major retail integrations, including Revco, Arbor, Eckerd, Simon Osco, and Longs. The company maintains a highly successful pharmacy benefit management division and also operates Minute Clinic, the retail-based health clinics, which I use every year, Larry, during flu season for sure. A long way, the CVS Caremark, along the way, CVS Caremark has maintained its focus on customers and patients, as it did when the company was founded in 1963. 
Today, CVS Caremark is in a unique position to help people work through the complexities of the changing healthcare industry. Larry Merlo, CEO and President, is here to tell us how and why CVS Caremark is helping people to navigate the new healthcare landscape. Please join me in welcoming Larry Merlo. Well, thank you, President Hoon and, uh, and Bill for that very kind introduction. Uh, it's great to, uh, to be here in Boston, and I certainly appreciate the opportunity to talk with you this morning. And, and let me just say at the outset uh, how pleased all of us at CVS Caremark are with our partnership with uh, Northeastern Schools of Pharmacy and Nursing. And, and I can tell you that uh, you can be very proud that the Northeastern graduates employed by us uh, have certainly demonstrated uh, their leadership abilities among, <clears throat> among our workforce and you know, throughout, uh, throughout our company. Uh, so the subject of my remarks today, uh, navigating the new healthcare landscape, I think it's one that affects everyone in this room, uh, both personally and professionally. Uh, whether you work in healthcare, uh, whether you offer uh, healthcare benefits to your employees, uh, use healthcare services yourself, or, or actually serve as a caregiver to a family member. And of course, uh, for all of you who uh, work or live in Massachusetts, you've certainly had a head start on healthcare reform, uh, more so than any other state. Massachusetts uh, has certainly been the vanguard for change, and I think there are many lessons that uh, have been learned from what this state has done to lead the charge for universal coverage, and, and I'll speak uh, a little more about this in a moment. Uh, before I get to what we at CVS Caremark are doing to provide solutions in this reshaped uh, healthcare landscape. Let me share uh, a little bit about who we are. And you know, as Bill mentioned, this year uh, we marked a very, very significant milestone, our 50th anniversary. We've come a long way since that first store uh, opened just up the road in Lowell. And all along the way, we have stayed true to uh, you know to our uh, focus on the customer, to our values. You know, one of our founders, uh, Stan Goldstein, who I know a, a few of you know. Uh, we were together uh, a few months back, and you know we had him attend one of our uh, management functions where we had a couple thousand people. And you know he was uh, you know he was obviously humbled in you know to see the growth of the company over the past 50 years, but he was also impressed because you know he said, Larry, the the values with which the company you know were founded, okay, 50 years ago, as he went around and talked to people, he said, I can still feel the energy you know, around those values today. And I, and I know he was very proud, as all of us are, of that fact. Uh, today, you probably know us best through uh, our CVS pharmacy stores with 7,500 locations across the country. We serve about 5 million customers each and every day. Uh, but we're more than just uh, a drugstore chain. We think of ourselves as a pharmacy innovation company that's helping people on their path to better health as the largest integrated a pharmacy provider in the country. And through Caremark Pharmacy Services, we provide uh, prescription drug benefit coverage to about 2,200 clients uh, you know, who have more than 60 million plan members, including 21 clients uh, right here in the Boston area, ranging from uh, large employers to health plans. Uh, we also operate about 650 retail medical clinics. Uh, they're branded as Clinic. And we've actually treated more than 15 million patients over the past 12 years. And, you know, when you think about our company, it's really this combination of these three businesses, our retail pharmacies, our clinics, our uh, prescription benefit services. You know, when you join them together into a single integrated model, that's what allows us to create real value for uh, our clients, our customers, and patients all across the country. Now, that said, uh, we still remember every day that our roots are right here in New England, and locally we employ nearly 12,000 colleagues uh, you know, through our about 350 uh, neighborhood CVS stores. Uh, we have 41-minute clinics operating in the state now, and we actually fill close to 43 million prescriptions in the state of Massachusetts alone each year. Uh, among the 21 clients that uh, the Caremark serves locally, we provide uh, the prescription insurance coverage for Massachusetts state employees and retirees serving uh, the needs of more than 150,000 members. So I think you can see that uh, we are certainly very much uh, a part of the day-to-day of -day -day business in Boston. You know, Bill touched on this a little bit that you know, giving back to the communities in which we live and serve is one of our core values and 
you know, we support a number of community programs that show our deep commitment to Massachusetts. I think first, uh, you know, it is, uh, it's certainly not lost on, on any of us that you know, this hotel is just a very short distance away from where uh, this year's Boston Marathon tragedy took place. We've contributed uh, over three quarters of a million dollars to the One Fund to help those victims uh, and their families. And over the past five years, we've invested more than uh, six million dollars in community and uh, charitable trust grants here in the state. Uh, we provided funding to some terrific organizations like uh, Camp Harborview, which delivers summer camp experiences to disadvantaged children, and you know, Boston Children's Hospital for their innovative uh, teletherapy pilot for children with autism. And of course, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the work that uh, we're doing around community health. Uh, we support a number of community health centers here in the city, uh, which provide free or uh, low-cost care to Bostonians, including uh, the Dimock and, and Mattapan Community Health Centers. Now, ad in addition to, uh, to our community support, we're also tackling some you know, pretty big issues uh, through research and collaboration with some locally-based academic and healthcare leaders. And you know, back in 2009, uh, CVS Caremark embarked uh, upon a collaborative project working with uh, Harvard and Brigham and Women's Hospital to better understand why people don't always take or stay on their prescription medications, what the industry refers to as medication not adherence. And you know, this collaboration has produced more than 30 studies that have appeared in a variety of publications, including uh, the Archives of Internal Medicine and the American Journal of Managed Care. Uh, so with that uh, background as an introduction, uh, let me spend some time uh, actually looking at the evolving healthcare landscape because there is a strong belief that you know, healthcare is going to change more in the next 10 years than it has in the past 50. And all the stakeholders in the system, whether it's you know, us as consumers, employers, health plans, physicians, hospitals, everyone is experiencing levels of unprecedented change. Furthermore, the, the healthcare system is, is stressed by you know, what I like to call this quality cost access conundrum. You know, healthcare costs continue to rise uh, while it's more challenging for people to uh, quickly access quality care through the traditional channels. And as a result, those stakeholders that I just mentioned, they need help. They're looking uh, to us at CVS Caremark for solutions. And I don't think it's going to surprise any of you in the room uh, to know that I believe that pharmacy is becoming increasingly important in addressing these challenges. And today we are helping uh, both businesses and consumers navigate uh, all of this change in complexity. So to start, I think it's important to understand uh, the current healthcare environment. And you know, I think as you look back uh, over the past 15 years, healthcare has been dominated by uh, employer-funded health insurance, and that has left about 50 million Americans uninsured, often without their needed medications. Now, all of this changes, begins to change with the passage of the Affordable Care Act, because when the law is fully implemented, there will be more than 30 million newly insured Americans, most of whom will be active uh, selectors of their coverage through the newly, in, uh, the newly formed uh, health insurance exchanges. And, you know, as I mentioned, Massachusetts has led the country as a pioneer in universal coverage. And, you know, today about 98% of Massachusetts residents are insured. I think that's pretty remarkable. Uh, last summer, when Governor Patrick launched the next chapter of Massachusetts health care reform, intended to lower costs and, you know, continue to make affordable care available to all, I think the state again uh, proved itself as a leader. And this new phase of the state's uh, health care system, it's focused on cost savings, greater transparency, better health information technology, and Joseph and I were talking about that earlier. All of those elements are critical to us at CVS Caremark as we look to serve our, uh, our customers and clients in new and better ways. Now, not only are we going to see the growing importance of health plans as we go forward, but we're also seeing more growth in the government programs with Medicaid uh, participation expanding and more seniors becoming eligible for Medicare. Both of those you know, events are going, to are going to add further stress to an already taxed health care system. Uh, a big driver of this is what you know, we refer to as this silver tsunami. You know, would you, or does it surprise you to know that there are 10,000 baby boomers 
who are becoming eligible for Medicare every day. Now, this means over 16 million new people becoming Medicare eligible by 2019. It's only six years from now. It also means we're facing a long-term increase in demand for services in the use of prescription medications. Another cost driver, uh, the increasing prevalence of chronic disease. Did, would it surprise you to know that about half of all Americans suffer from one or more chronic diseases, and this is expected to continue to rise for the next 20 years? Today, chronic disease accounts for three out of every four dollars spent in healthcare. And at the same time, the number of people who don't take their prescription medications as prescribed, I'm going to call it an epidemic. There have been study after study that have quantified the fact that this issue of you know, prescription non-adherence is costing our healthcare system about $300 billion. $300 billion a year in unnecessary and avoidable costs. And, you know, we're taking a much closer look at the reasons behind non-adherence, and I'll come back to that uh, in a few minutes. And then finally, we have seen uh, the start of a transition to a digital society. Uh, we're all living with it. It has transformed how we live, how consumers behave, and how businesses compete. And although the transition has been a bit slower in healthcare, significant and lasting change is underway. And I think the reality of all of this is that innovation, it's not an option. And as I said earlier, I'm convinced that you know, one important avenue to improve this quality cost access conundrum is rooted in pharmacy care. Now, it's clear that uh, we need to find new approaches uh, to health care to ensure better outcomes while managing costs. And that's why we're taking full advantage of our national footprint, expertise, and enterprise-wide assets at CVS Caremark II to help those we serve succeed in this new health care landscape. So consider this. I mentioned earlier that you know, we serve over 5 million people in our retail stores every day and you know, our Minute Clinic locations. And we serve 60 million plan members through our pharmacy uh, benefit management operations. That is over 75,000 pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, and nurse practitioners engaging with people on a daily basis. Now, pharmacy care has always been one of the most accessible parts of the healthcare delivery system. Because think about this for a minute. How many times have you been to your primary care doctor in the last three or six months? Now, how many times have you been to your local pharmacy, okay, during that period of time, even if it's just to pick up a bottle of aspirin? And traditionally, people have thought about pharmacies as pill dispensaries, but we know that pharmacy is much more than that. Pharmacy is extending the front lines of healthcare to deliver better outcomes at lower cost to the people that we serve. And as a pharmacy innovation company, CVS Caremark is driving many uh, innovative approaches to reinventing pharmacy. And, you know, the ultimate goal here is to help more people on their path to better health. And the ways that we plan to do this look very different from how we've served customers in the past. So let me share uh, a few of those ways. And, and I, think, I think some things that uh, you might consider doing in your own organizations, perhaps even in your own lives. So I'll start with, uh, with the greatest asset that we have, quite frankly, others in in the pharmacy uh, business have, and that's our people. Uh, pharmacists are in a very unique position to help. Uh, they are highly trusted resources for patients. You know, for many years now, Gallup has done this annual survey uh, of the most trusted professionals. You know, across, we're not talking about just healthcare now. This is, you know, professionals, you know, of, in, in the broadest sense. And, you know, pharmacists have consistently ranked among the, uh, among the top three most trusted professionals. Today, they help with a broad range of counseling and interventions. And, you know, one of the biggest opportunities is addressing that issue that I mentioned a minute ago of, you know, patients not taking their medications as prescribed. Now, I think everyone here recognizes that most chronic diseases oftentimes are treated with some type of drug therapy. And, you know, this is why I, I start calling this an epidemic. One in three patients who start a maintenance prescription will decide to discontinue treatment before their first refill is even due. Less than one half of patients are taking their doses as prescribed, and three out of four people will stop taking their medication 
within the first year of beginning therapy for a newly diagnosed condition. Now, I think that constitutes an epidemic. Obviously, this represents a huge opportunity to improve health and at the same time, lower costs. Remember, this is costing our system $300 billion a year. So it's why we created Pharmacy Advisor. It's, it's a portfolio of programs uh, to help people manage chronic disease. Uh, it connects them with pharmacists who help them stay on their prescribed medications and prevent those complications that are taxing and costing you know, the healthcare system. And these touch points range from uh, phone counseling and email reminders to in-store counseling and actually home consultation for the most complex cases. The important thing here is the research shows that it's working. Uh, there was a study that was published in Health Affairs on the impact that Pharmacy Advisor has had on people with diabetes, and it showed that the percent of patients who started taking their medications as prescribed actually increased. And at the same time, the interventions are very cost effective with a return on investment of about $3 for every dollar spent in terms of making sure that those patients are you know, getting their refills and taking their prescriptions uh, as prescribed. In fact, we estimate that our Caremark clients saved uh, a total of over $600 million in 2012. Pharmacy Advisor uh, is a big contributor to those savings. And today, this program is available for uh, 10 chronic diseases, ranging from diabetes and cardiac care to you know, asthma and osteoporosis. So with that, let me turn to, uh, to the innovation that we're driving you know, with Minute Clinic. Uh, today, we're the largest and fastest growing retail clinic provider. We expect to expand to more than uh, 1,500 locations across the country by 2017. And I do want to take a minute and, and be absolutely clear on one very, very important point. We do not advocate for or believe that the family physician uh, is going away or should go away. In fact, we see our Minute Clinic offering is complementary, it's collaborative, and it's supportive of primary care, primary care medical homes, and helpful to the system overall. So today, Minute Clinic provides convenient, affordable, high-quality care for uh, common conditions. We're open seven days a week, including evenings and holidays. We see patients uh, on a walk-in basis, no, uh, no appointments required. Uh, Minute Clinic staffed by highly trusted family nurse practitioners and physician assistants. We have about 115 nurse practitioners uh, practicing here in Massachusetts, and we're fully accredited uh, by the Joint Commission. And we accept nearly every insurance plan, including government programs like MassHealth. So we believe that Minute Clinic is both replacing the use of, uh, the use of higher cost sites, such as emergency rooms, is, as well as addressing unmet needs for access to primary care. And both of those activities are helping to hold down the overall cost of care. In fact, there was a RAND study that was published that suggested care delivered at Minute Clinic was 40 to 80% less expensive than alternative sites, and even more important, very high in quality. So let me offer a little more detail as to why CVS Caremark is in a unique position you know, to help all of these stakeholders navigate uh, the complexities of a changing healthcare system. First, we're extending uh, the front lines of care for consumers. We're helping alleviate the primary care physician shortage, you know, which is expected to continue to grow exponentially over the next decade. And that has certainly been felt here in Massachusetts since universal healthcare was introduced about five years ago. Today, it's about uh, 46 days to get an appointment with a primary care physician. It used to be about 25 days. Uh, next, given our access to the patient, we can play a key role in helping to close gaps in care and, again, ensure better medication adherence for improved health outcomes. Uh, third, with employers and health plans, you know, our integrated business model has the added advantage of being able to communicate both from a business-to-business -business point of view as well as business-to-consumer. And that allows us to offer differentiated, tailored services that uh, you know, can, can allow us to partner beyond pharmacy uh, to drive more value to health plans and their members. Uh, fourth, we're helping providers, uh, physicians, with new solutions, uh, enabling them to succeed in a world that's migrating away from fee-for-service and migrating to outcomes-based 
management and compensation. And finally, we're helping consumers connect the dots and helping them simplify family health care management. So I've got a short video. It's only a couple minutes. It actually shows you know, how we can do just that through the power of a great digital strategy. So I'm going to introduce you to Beth, and I think all of you are going to know Beth. Meet Beth. She's her family's chief executive health officer, looking after the health care of five different people. She has to manage the complexity of the specialty medication and treatment for her daughter's cystic fibrosis, the medications for her husband's diabetes, and her father's high blood pressure and cholesterol. Her son gets bumps and bruises, and Beth has her own issues managing her weight. She also deals with different doctors, clinics, consultations, and insurance benefits, as well as managing rising health care costs and 14 prescriptions every month. To Beth, this all seems more confusing and frustrating than it should be. CVS Caremark is creating a new way to manage prescriptions and health care for Beth that's easier and more dynamic, combining all her family's information, which allows her to access it in one place, a digital hub with tools, knowledge, and resources all at her fingertips, where she'll receive personalized offers to save her time and money, and specific recommendations to get the most out of medications and therapies with live expert help from pharmacists and nurse practitioners and the information to ensure her family stays on their medications. Only CVS Caremark can give Beth these integrated tools and solutions for greater ease, control, and peace of mind, be it in-store, on a mobile app, through the mail, or online, anywhere, anytime. At CVS Caremark, we're helping Beth and the millions of people just like her on their path to better health. So to wrap up, uh, you know, we're pretty excited to be celebrating 50 years of pharmacy innovation and you know, very focused on you know, what the next 50 years bring. And you know, I'm going to come back to, uh, to where I started this morning. Uh, my belief that you know, pharmacy will be on the leading edge of addressing that quality cost access conundrum. And as a pharmacist myself, I know the value that these healthcare professionals you know, can play in the lives of others. Uh, I believe pharmacy care uh, can and will make a big difference in the health, the well-being, and the financial outlook uh, of our country. And I know that there's even more that pharmacy can and will do to improve care and lower costs. And I know our CVS Caremark colleagues here in Massachusetts and you know across uh, the entire company join me in committing to you to do just that, uh, to do our part to provide uh, better, more affordable care to people young and old across the country. And you know, in fact, the ability to make a real difference and to help people on their path to better health, it's our purpose, uh, it's our promise, and it's our passion across the company uh, each and every day. So thank you for, uh, for the opportunity to come and, uh, and share uh, the CVS Caremark story with you this morning, and I think we're going we're gonna to open it up for questions. Yes. In terms of, my name is Marcy. No, 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 oh, no. oh, oh, oh. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for sharing your story. My name is Priscilla Douglas, and in reading about your company, I understand that one of your favorite terms is sweet spots. Ah. And I want to, uh, to hear a little bit about how you identify them and link to innovation. Okay, great. I'll great go back question. to my seat. So <laughs> I know I'm going to ask Karen. Karen, can you put that one slide back? The, I think it was the next. Okay, so... We do talk about sweet spots a lot in the company, and you know, I, I talked about the fact that you know we operate three businesses: you know, CVS Pharmacy, Caremark, and Minna Clinic. And you know, this slide is really depicting the fact that you know each of those circles represent the business, but you know, there's an overlapping sweet spot, if you will, where you know we can leverage our assets, you know, to address that quality cost access conundrum in a way that if we were just CVS Pharmacy or if Caremark was standalone, you know, they wouldn't be able to do. And, you know, so, you know, Priscilla, innovation, you know, absolutely becomes a key to that because we're going down a, a, a road that no one's gone, okay? And, you know, so, you know, how do we think about those opportunities? And, you know, how do we understand, 
you know, what the unmet needs are in the marketplace and how our integrated assets, you know, can bring a solution to that. So, you know, pharmacy advisor, I think is, that I touched on earlier, I think is, is a great example of that. You know, we've invested a lot in technology, uh, you know, to make, uh, to allow the ability for pharmacists, you know, to do some of the things that we talked about. And, and I know one of the questions that I often get is, Larry, listen, I go into your stores and, you know, your stores are busy, okay? So, you know, exactly how are you doing the things that you say you're doing? And, I mean, you know, it, it's working because people have published studies on it. And, and the fact is, you know, through technology and through one of those sweet spots, we've actually built some pretty sophisticated algorithms in terms of, you know, who needs to be talked to and when do they need to talk to. So it's not every patient that needs an intervention, okay, in the retail store or on the phone. So we've created a seamless experience in terms of how we engage with that consumer, whether it's at retail, whether it's on the phone, whether it's through one of our mail order pharmacies, and we're able to deliver that, you know, that message quite in a, in a couple minutes, okay, but to make that exchange, you know, very meaningful and very engaging for the patient. So actually, you know, I could spend the next hour talking about this because, you know, uh, you know I think that we're in... You know, I, I end up using a lot of cliches, and I think we're in the top of the second, okay, in a nine-inning game. Of course, and by the way, we didn't score six runs in the top of the first and then give up the lead, okay, like the Red Sox did last night. Okay, but, you know, we do have a lot of opportunities. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, it, it, as I mentioned, you know, pharmacies, it, it, it is the most accessible piece, you know, in, of, you know, service in the healthcare delivery chain. And, and I think as a consumer, you know, everyone here recognizes it when you start thinking about, you know, trying to talk to your physician, okay, and but yet the ability to talk to a pharmacist or a nurse practitioner. Good morning. That Good morning. was terrific. I'm Terry Fulmer. I'm the Dean of the Bouvier College of Health Sciences at Northeastern and a nurse practitioner. Do you foresee a time when uh, a CVS Minute Clinic could be embedded in a, in a healthcare system, for example, like within Mayo or within Partners? Because that, you may already be doing that. No, Terry, it's a great question. And, and I, I think it would be, i give you a little background on, on, uh, on Minute Clinic because, and, and there's, been a, there's been a lot that's been said and written you know, here in Massachusetts about Minute Clinic. And, you know, obviously, it's it was. Uh, I think you could characterize Minute Clinic as disruptive innovation. Um, you know, it it began with a focus on serving, you know, those patients who didn't have insurance. You know, less than, you know, probably six seven years ago, less than twenty percent of all Minute Clinic visits, you know, had some type of insurance copay associated with it. Today. That pyramid has been inverted. Today, about not, it's approaching 90% of all Minute Clinic visits have some type of insurance copay. And the reason for that is what I covered you know, in my remarks, that you know, people view Minute Clinic as lower cost, you know, high quality care. And if I can get that visit out of the emergency room, okay, and into a Minute Clinic, and then you know, not only is it more convenient, okay, but you know, it's less costly. And, you know, we've begun to, uh, you know, formulate partnerships with some leading, you know, health institutions. I think we have about 25 today. We have one with UMass uh, Memorial. And, you know, we're, we're beginning to, uh, you know, explore, you know, what is, what is MediClinic 2.0, if you will, okay? And so we have a pilot underway with, uh, with the Cleveland Clinic where we're actually, you know, transmitting the electronic medical record back and forth. So, you know, whoever is seeing that patient, whether it's a nurse practitioner or, you know, a doc at Cleveland Clinic, they have, you know, a, a complete evaluation of the patient's history, okay, and, you know, their, their overall uh, care visits. And, you know, we're, be, we're beginning to triage patients, you know, back and forth, you know, acknowledging that, you know, there are absolutely, you know, conditions that, you know, the nurse practitioner is going to refer that patient on to. And by the way, you know, these health institutions recognize that, you know, I've got to get these visits out of the emergency room, okay? I, you know, if someone is, you know, thinks they might have strep throat, you know, let's get that in, into Minute Clinic. So, 
you know, Terry, I, you know, I, I wouldn't rule that out, okay? And, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of wide open for, you know, for what's next, recognizing that we've got to solve access quality and cost. And I think, to, you know, the ability, you know, if the answer to that is yes, then, you know, Good morning, I'm Mike Egan. On uh, behalf of the Red Sox and the Red Sox Foundation, I'd like to thank CVS for their support. Um, you guys do a great job. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about education. What, what, can you, what would you say to a, a high school graduate going on to college, uh, thinking about a career in pharmacy, uh, and then or in a university who might be considering offering those, that service? In terms of a career path for a, for a, a young person like that, I, my feeling is that the days of a pharmacist, entrepreneur, perhaps like yourself, is over, uh, and that, uh, that the person taking your job someday might be more of an expert in uh, merchandising than perhaps uh, uh, medical interactions. Uh, Mike, don't tell our board of directors that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have some tread on the tires here. Okay. <laughs> but, no, you know, Listen, I, obviously I have a bias. I'm, I'm very proud to say I'm a pharmacist. And I actually think the opposite, okay? I think that, you know, as, as I look across, you know, our company, we've got pharmacists, you know, I, I'm talking about outside the store environment. Now, we've got pharmacists all over the place, okay? And, you know, there, it, we've got pharmacists in our real estate department, you know, in our merchandising department, in our logistics area, and... Yeah, you know, and we actually promote that. And you know, I think that you know, as as we go forward, and and I, you know, I see it, okay, where you know there is, um, I'll, I'll go back and refer to it as another sweet spot where, you know, there is the clinical aspect, you know, of pharmacy with absolute, you know, health in mind, but there's a business element to pharmacy and I think it's it becomes another one of those sweet spots where you know I, I think the opportunities uh, for a career in pharmacy are unlimited I think that you know it you know I think there are elements of a pharmacy career today that will you know exist 20 30 years from now I think that there are emerging opportunities so you know I trust me when I get that question I I think it's a great profession uh, and uh, you know I encourage you know, as many people to, you know, give it you know, serious consideration. I think we had the gentleman who raised ah. his hand. Do you, over there? No? Okay. It was answered. It was answered. Okay. I'm Jack Reynolds. I'm dean of the School of Pharmacy, which is one of the schools in the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. Thanks very much for your remarks, Larry. I, too, am a pharmacist. I'm so glad to hear you say what you said. <laughs> uh, future. Um, you know, one of the things that we value so much at Northeastern are our partnerships. It, CVS is such a strong partner with us in the School of Pharmacy and Nursing and other health science programs. Um, the information that we learn from our partners gets infused into our curriculum. And to that extent, I'm wondering if there's something you could comment on that you see emerging relative to the model you described that we ought to be thinking about at the university, whether it be new applications and technology or business contexts that we give to students who then take on a practice role as pharmacists. What more do you think we ought to be preparing for as we continue to develop our <clears throat> curriculum? Yeah, Jack, it's a great job, a, a great question. And, and by the way, you know, Jack, you and, and your team, you know, do a terrific job. You know, the, the results speak for themselves, as I mentioned earlier. Northeastern grads have, you know, have, uh, you know, have been terrific assets to our organization. You know, one of the things that we do, uh, and we actually do it two years after a new uh, pharmacy student, I, I, I shouldn't say new student, I should say new graduate, we actually sit down and we, we have them complete a survey, okay? And, you know, and we ask them various things about, you know, their work experience at, at CVS, but we also explore, you know, how did your, you know, college education prepare you for the environment that you have today, okay? And 
there are many, and, and by the way, I'm speaking globally now across the country, so we probably, you know, hire pharmacy students from upwards of 80 schools across the country. And, you know, there are many, many positives that come back in terms of, you know, the, you know preparing them for a career to, you know, that evaluates all the clinical aspects of their job. The two areas that, you know, kind of stand out as, as opportunities, Jack, back to your question, you know, one is, you know, how to, how to deal with the, the customer, okay? And, and the second one is, this, is the evolving aspect of pharmacy business. And, you know, I think as, uh, you know, as you read about it in the paper every day, whether it's, you know, hospitals, hospitals talking about, you know, uh, lower reimbursement rates or you see the physicians talking about, well, pharmacies experience the same thing. And, and I think that, you know, pharmacists, you know, struggle sometimes in terms of, you know, how should I think about that? And, you know, and we do a lot, you know, to help them with that. You know, the customer one becomes very interesting, okay, because as, uh, and I'll share this story, uh, it, it, and it's, it's actually a nurse practitioner story, but, you know, it, it, the same thing goes on in pharmacy every day, okay, that, you know, this, this uh, mom wrote a letter to say that I had a 17-year-old son, okay, and I needed, and we do sports physicals at Minute Clinic, and, you know, she needed, she couldn't get an appointment with, and actually this was here in Massachusetts, she couldn't get an appointment, you know, with her primary care physician, okay, so, okay, I know Minute Clinic does the sports physicals, I'll take him there, fill out the sheet, she'll sign it or he'll sign it, and he can get on, you know, with starting to practice basketball. So the mom goes to write that, you know, and I'm reading this, and she says, you know, I, I take my son in, the nurse practitioner does the examination, and she says, I don't want to alarm you, but, you know, I detect a heart murmur, okay, and I can't pass your son. I can't sign that document. And the mom was furious, okay, and, you know, my son's had a sports physical every year. What do you mean, you know, he's got a problem? You know, she was... The mom was questioning the nurse practitioner's competence, but call it mother's guilt, if you will, okay, that, you know, mom took the son to a cardiologist, and sure enough, uh, there was a murmur, okay, the, you know, the 17-year-old was suffering from, you know, cardiomyopathy, which, you know, is, you know, you, you, you hear these stories about athletes having sudden death on the court or on the playing field, that's what her son was suffering from. And the doctor said, you know what, he's done with his physical sports and, you know, he might want to think about taking up golf, okay? And, you know, and, and she ends the letter by saying, you know, you just keep telling those nurse practitioners to keep flunking, okay, those people when they, when they should be flunked because, you know, she was trying to figure out that, you know, how could he have, you know, had his physical every year and this was never detected, okay? And... You know, but I use that as a story in terms of, you know, what happens out there every day, whether it's a nurse practitioner or pharmacist doing, you know, wonderful things, okay, that ultimately end up saving people's lives, okay? But yet there's that moment of truth, okay? And, you know, the mom acknowledged that, you know, she was fuming mad, okay, and calling that nurse practitioner's competency into question. And I think that that's where... You know, we, it's, it's hard sometimes to deal with that, okay? Because now you're, you know, you're in that, you're kind of in that gray zone, okay? And, you know, you've got a responsibility to do what's right from a clinical, you know, point of view. But, you know, how do I, how do I make sure that that patient understands, you know, what they need to do? Okay, so, so Jack, it's a long-winded answer to your question. I'm sorry, but... Last question. <clears throat> Good morning. Richard Diagazio. Um, real estate question. I learned in the dark ages when I went to Northeastern that competition increases business, and we see it with the McDonald's and the, and the Wendy's and so on and the Burger King's in the same corner. The same thing is happening in, in your industry. Uh, what's your strategy in terms of where you locate your stores and why are there the big three on each corner? Yeah, uh, right, go right across from Walgreens. That's no. <laughs> 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 I, 
I, I know it seems that way. Actually, that's, what they, that's their strategy against us, okay? Uh, you know what, we, we actually uh, have, I, I consider it to be a pretty sophisticated real estate program, okay, that, you know, there's, uh, you know, technology is a wonderful thing, and, and I think that, you know, we have been able to, you know, marry the benefits of technology in terms of, you know, evaluating those measures that matter, like population density and, uh, and, and competition, uh, and, but at the same time, Nothing takes the place of, you know, feet on the street, okay, and understanding the nuances, you know, that exist, uh, you know, in a particular, you know, geography. So I can tell you that, you know, in a market like uh, uh, Long Island, New York, you know, the rules with which we'll look at real estate is very different than uh, a rural market in Tennessee. And uh, I think that, you know, as an industry, uh, you know, quite frankly, for some of the reasons that I mentioned, that, uh, you, know, as, uh, you know, as we have this silver tsunami underway, you know, that, quite frankly, is, you know, that becomes a tailwind for the industry. Uh, senior citizens, you know, actually take three times the number of medications as the younger population. So, you know, that, that certainly increases, you know, the opportunity and the demand. And, uh, you know, there's, it, it's probably a combination of both, uh, it's, it's not all science and there's a little art there and, you know, I know as we, you know, as we have, you know, new colleagues come into, you know, or as part of uh, a development program, we'll have people sit in a real estate meeting and they'll walk away and, and they'll say, I'm confused and, you know, I'll say, well, what, you know, talk to me about this and, and they're trying to look for a set of rules that they can apply and it kind of goes back to, you know, the rules are going to be different, okay? They're going to differ by geography. They're going to differ by market, okay? And, uh, you know, I will say that there are places where we don't need three drug stores on three corners. And by the way, the fourth corner has a food store with a pharmacy. And, uh, you know, so we, I can tell you, we've walked away. It's a great piece of real estate, but, you know, we don't need another drug store here, okay? And we've walked away from those situations. So I'd like to think where... You know, we're the ones that are doing the business, okay, and, you know, some of our competitors are sitting there saying, I should have never put a store here, okay? So, so anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me give you a thumbs up. Mary, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great way of closing the year uh, for us. And Michael... You know, going back to your question, what can you do if you're a pharmacist? You can be, become the CEO. <laughs> I mean, that's the answer. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great summer. Have a great summer. Thank you.